Hey there, it's Daphne from Blue Quarry, and today I'll be sharing a process video for one of my figurative ink sketches. Here's the finished piece, but this wasn't my original plan. It was the first time using this technique, and I'd intended to paint a simple watercolor-like painting using one color of ink. The ink I'm using is called Noodler's Ink, and I will include information on that in the description box below. One of the reasons I decided to go with ink was because I thought I would stick with a monochromatic color scheme to simplify things a bit. Especially as I'm just starting to explore this, it just takes out some of the difficulty associated with trying to mix colors and trying to get all that right. So I just thought it would be a lot easier just to start with one color. So I started out with a sketch that I created. I was using an inspiration on an app that I love called Sketchy. I'll include the information for that in the description box below. I started out just by creating a quick pencil sketch on watercolor paper. And uh, this is actually paper that's going to go into a sketchbook or an art journal when I'm done. Uh, I am kind of doing this backwards. I make, cut and fold the pages that are going to go into my art journals. And then when I'm working at home, I like to kind of tape the paper down and paint flat rather than having it in the book form. So I do that. And then it is also nice because if I come up with something that I really hate and I don't want in my sketchbook or my art journal, I can choose not to insert it later. But uh, that's what I'm doing here. By the way, if you wanna learn how to create your own handmade art journals, you can check out my course, Create Artful Journals. I will also include a link to that in the description box. To get set up for this, I pulled out my little paint palette and I put just a drop of ink into a few of those paint walls there. And then I added some distilled water and I added varying amounts of water to try to get at least three different uh, strengths of the blue to make it a little bit easier on myself when I was applying the paint. You can build up the color by adding layers or glazes of color just like you do with watercolor or you can go right to some of the deep darks by just dipping right into some of the stronger uh, solutions so you'll probably notice at this point this is what i call the ugly stage <laughs> of my painting um, i was not really happy with it at this point i was ready to just sort of throw in the towel i the thing that i didn't like was that the dark blue ink and that top area. Um, I had originally put it down and the paper was still a little bit damp so it started to spread a little bit. It was a lot darker than I really wanted. I didn't want that much contrast in that area. And so I kept going with it in hopes that I would be able to pull it out. And I'm really glad that I did. And I think that's, you know, one of those lessons that I have to reteach myself every single time I do a painting. It's that I shouldn't give up. It's so easy once I make a mistake or take a look at it and say, ah, oh, this is not turning out the way I had envisioned it. It's too easy to just walk away or, or to say, okay, well, I'll just start over again. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to keep going. And that is, again, my strongest piece of advice for anyone who's just starting out is just keep going and give yourself a chance to work yourself past that ugly stage and get to a point in your painting where it starts to come back together. Now in this painting I got to a point where I was sort of done with the painting part of it and I took a look at it and I still wasn't happy with it. So there's not a whole lot you can do with what, well, there are some things that you can do with watercolor. You can try to lift the color back up if you feel like you got too dark in areas, but that doesn't always work. It really depends on the paint. And in this case, I don't think the ink would have lifted off the paper very well. So 
my plan B was to go ahead and add some ink lines to it using a pen. I had been inspired by a drawing done by another artist. In fact, it's the artist whose photograph this is um, on Sketchy. She did a cross-hatched ink drawing that I just fell in love with. The texture in the fabric was just beautiful. And it was just done simply with cross-hatching. So I thought, well, why don't I give that a shot? So you'll see that I pull out the pen in a couple of minutes here. And, um, and I just start cross-hatching. You know, it's interesting looking back on this process because in the end, the sketch turns out a lot better than I thought it would at this point in the painting. And it's actually because I messed up that it did. Once I felt like it was not turning out the way I wanted it to, it kind of took off some of the pressure. I mean, I had already ruined it in my head. And so what harm would it do to pull out my pens and start adding texture lines? Initially, I really wanted to start out with the cross hatching technique, but I didn't because I was happy with the initial sketch and I didn't want to ruin it. <laughs> I didn't want to start throwing in these lines and then be really disappointed in the way it turned out. And, um, you know, in my last video, the lesson was to keep going and push yourself past that uh, ugly phase and um, have confidence that you can pull it out. In this case, I didn't really pull it out, not as I had originally planned. Because as I mentioned, my original plan was to do something that was sort of a watercolor-like painting. And in the end, I ended up with a sketch with pen strokes on it and cross-hatching. But I still did manage to learn a lot and come up with a new technique that I absolutely love. And um, it's kind of sending me in a new direction. And that wouldn't have happened if this painting had turned out perfectly. So I guess the lesson here is to take something that you consider to be a failure and use that to your advantage and give yourself a chance to explore new techniques and explore new mediums and I guess turn lemons into lemonade. So here you can see I've gotten to the pen portion of my sketch and I started out using a, it's like a 0.7 gel pen. I have no idea what brand it is. Uh, the, the part that had the label on it broke off the pen. It was just something I had and it flows very nicely. So I decided to use it. And then you'll see I actually switch pens um, in a couple minutes here. This pen was a little bit, it's very black and it has a little bit of a thicker line and I thought I wanted um, some finer detail in the fabric. So here it is. I'm switching over to my Uniball Deluxe Micro pen and it just gave me a little bit more control. This is really a personal preference. I can tell you what tools I use and I can't say that, you know, absolutely you should go out and buy it. I think you should, if you have some different pens at home, I would suggest just kind of playing with them and seeing what works for you because the, the way I draw my lines and the style that appeals to me may be completely different than what works for you. So I highly suggest that you just experiment and figure out what works well for you. So I am playing with the direction of my cross hatching and just trying to figure out what I like and what I don't like. And since this is a shirt that I'm trying to establish some texture, I, I want it to look like it's the texture of the shirt itself. I am trying in most places to sort of run the direction of the lines um, with the direction of the fabric, if that makes 
sense. So on the sleeve, I'm kind of running parallel. I start off running parallel to sort of the cuff of the sleeve, but that's gonna change as you go up and down the arm because there's little um, like fold lines in there or little curves in there from where the fabric is draping. And so I change the direction slightly as I get over those areas, just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then I do a cross hatching, which basically goes in the opposite direction. Uh, but again, in that case, it's sort of running in the other direction with the fabric. So it's running along the length of the sleeve. That's not always the case. Sometimes if I'm in sort of in a shadow area, I just do sort of crisscrossing. Um, now you can see me on her skin and I'm trying to be very careful in these areas that I don't get too heavy handed with the cross hatching um, because I want the skin to look smooth and um, not nearly as textured as the fabric. The great thing about working in a sketchbook or on a sheet of watercolor paper is simply that it's a piece of paper. If it didn't work out, it would not have been the end of the world, but I learned so much more and I did so much more, um, tried some new techniques, found something that I really loved. And the only reason I did it is because my first attempt was in my mind a fail at doing just the painting part of it. And because of that fail, I ended up stumbling onto a process that I absolutely love and I will definitely be exploring more in the future. I do wanna mention that this video is running at four times speed, so if you're just starting out learning how to do cross hatching, you want to take your time with this. Don't rush it. Try to get your lines as controlled as possible. Try to get your spacing between your lines as even as possible. Look at this as a almost like a meditative type exercise. It reminds me a lot of Zen tangling and you sort of have to relax into the process. Once the, the drawing is there and the painting is there underneath, all you're really doing is adding some cross hatching lines as shadowing. So it's a really fun and relaxing process. So once I've gotten all my texture lines in on the shirt and I've added some texture lines into the hair and on the cell phone and I'm completely happy with that, I then decided to add a little bit of white ink. And the white ink is um, a Uniball Signo pen, which I love. It's got a slightly thicker weight to it. I think it's a point it's a broad point. So the, the paint flows nicely, it's very opaque, it covers nicely, but it also, you have to be really careful with it because you can overdo it a little bit. The reason I went to the white is because I wanted to bring back some of those lights that I lost when I was doing the painting process. And I think it's really important for a painting or a drawing to have highlights and shadows. Uh, I think it just gives it a lot more visual interest that way. So I just decided to go for it with the cross hatching process and I'm really happy that I did.
So as I'm approaching the end of this video and the end of this painting, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope you found it informative and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my website as well, bluequarry.com.